CataractCoach.com. Checking the IOP or intraocular pressure at the end of surgery. Let me show you my technique here. We're finishing up a case here, removing viscoelastic, just orienting this toric lens. Now, the traditional way of checking the intraocular pressure is using something that has a gauge, like a Shiat tonometer, a tono pen, or even a Barracare tonometer. All these are, are very good and they're accurate and they're a good way of measuring the pressure. But what if you don't have these devices? Can you check the pressure in another way? We're sealing up the incision here, just using 20 70 gauge cannula filled with balanced salt solution and doing a little hydration there right in the corneal stroma. And that's sufficient. We don't want to do too much hydration, just enough to seal the incision. We don't want to induce any astigmatism from that. A little sweep here in the anterior chamber, centering up the lens, making sure I'm happy. Everything looks good here. Now, my ideal pressure at the end of surgery is about 20 millimeters of mercury. Okay, but it's a little bit more, like 25 but I want to avoid a very low pressure of less than 10 millimeters of mercury, and I want to avoid a very high pressure that's, let's say, more than 30. So there's a sponge now soaked in tetracaine, placing it over the incision, and we'll check to make sure the incision is totally dry. And it looks pretty good. Let's take another closer look here. Now I touch the cannula to the cornea right there, and it feels mushy, that feels low. So I think the pressure there's low. I inject a little more saline. We're gonna check again by touching. And that looks good, much better pressure. Now with the normal pressure, the incision looks great, much better. Now there's no more leakage. So my method is to use this 27 gauge cannula to depress the central cornea. And by how much it gives or how much it moves, I'm able to estimate re reasonably accurately the intraocular pressure. Now it certainly takes time and practice and you'll get used to it as well. Some people use a finger to push on the cornea or palpate it. Not a big fan of that. Let's look at another case. So again, the end of the surgery, I was in the capsule bag, removing our viscoelastic, everything looks great here. Let's seal the incision. So some balanced salt solution, hydrating the incision back and forth, just enough. There we go, checking the pressure. It seemed pretty reasonable. Notice how the incisions have a little bit of bleeding from them. That's how I like it. I like to have these incisions slightly nicking the limbal vessels. I think you seal better. So in this patient, I made two incisions to help address astigmatism. We're sitting superiorly, so with the rule at about the 9 degree meridian. So we're checking both those incisions, superior and inferior. Let's make sure they're sealed up. That looks good here. And we'll check the other one as well, making sure everything is, is uh, sufficiently sealed. We don't want any leakage here. Now, if the pressure in the eye is too high, more than physiologic, it's more prone to leak. If the pressure in the eye is too low, less than 10 millimeters of mercury, then there's not enough support or pressure from in the eye pushing the incision together and the incision will leak. So these incisions that we make, these valved incisions work best when the intraocular pressure is around 20 or 25 millimeters of mercury. And that looks pretty good. Let's look at one more last case here. This is an interesting, also a toric uh, trifocal lens. You can see the torque marks on the lens. You also notice that my phaco incision is 90 degrees away from the steep axis, from that orientation of those torque lens marks. So we filled up the eye there, checking the pressure looks pretty reasonable. And we're gonna look at our incisions here. So here's a Wexel sponge soaked in tetracaine. I'm gonna place that over the incision and then use another sponge to check and look at the tip of the sponge. It's slightly leaked, so I'll try that again. And when I put the dry sponge here, look how the tip of the sponge expands. That tells me there's still a little leak there, so probably we need to adjust the pressure. So touching it's very firm. Let's release a little pressure. Now that looks better, more physiologic. And now let's check the incision one more time, and this should make it a whole lot better. And we'll check, and now no more leak. It looks great. So this is my technique for checking intraocular pressure at the end of the case. I hope you have something similar, and uh, share with me. I know you love YouTube videos, so do I, but check out cataractcoach.com. That's actually the full teaching site that has a lot more material than just this YouTube channel. All the videos are there, easily searchable, a lot of great material. Thank you.